Welcome back to lesson number 14 and working with surfaces in AutoCAD Civil 3D. Uh, we're getting close to the end here and uh, just want to show you a few more very useful tools that we can use to work with surfaces. Uh, this next one is one of my favorites in working with surfaces and that's creating cut fill uh, exhibits showing the exact amount of cut and fill uh, that's needed at any particular point here on the surface. Now, I call these cut fill tick maps. You hear them referred to as a number of different things. Um, cut fill heat maps, I've also uh, heard it referred to as that. Uh, but essentially what we're looking for is to see s labels in either gr green or red based on cut or fill for the cut and fill on this surface. So to do this, to accomplish this, we have to have a certain style for spot elevations on a grid. Now I've already imported that style into this 14 start file um, and we will take a look at it just to see what it, how that is made. Um, but I recommend that when you get ready to run this, you just use the style I've already given you. So we want to, to go to add labels and label a surface and spot elevations on grid. And then we're going to use this cut fill grid label style. Uh, for the markers, I'm just going to say none for now. I don't need any markers. And then I'll hit the uh, pin button so there so it'll go away. I'm just going to hit add. And it's asking me to select a surface. Um, now, the surface I want to label here with this is the actual volume surface. Remember, because the volume surface is going to have the elevations uh, at zero at cut fill transition, uh, positive values for fill, negative values for cut. So I'll hit enter and I'll just use that basic existing grade to propose grade volume surface and I'll hit OK. Now it asks me for a grid base point. So I can, if I want to run this on that entire surface, I need to come over here on the bottom left corner of the grid. I'll just select somewhere down here. And now it's asking you for an angle. So I can pick an angle to actually define this grid. If I want to line it up with a pad, I can probably do it that way. If I don't care for it to be lined up with a pad, I can just hit enter to accept the zero angle. So I'll do that. Now it's asking me for a grid spacing. So I can do this um, on any really number of grid spacings. Um, it's really going to be relative to the area that you're looking at and the scale of your drawing because it won't make a lot of sense if you have a, a very small grid and the drawing scale is huge or vice versa. If you have a big grid and the drawing scale is very small. Uh, let's start out with a 10 foot X spacing on the grid and a 10 foot Y spacing on the grid. And now you can kind of see ghosted in the background is the grid. It's asking me for the upper right location of the grid. So I need to go somewhere above the upper right. And it's given me the uh, box that says we're going to look within that box to label that surface. Um, I'm good with that. That encompasses the entire surface. So I'll accept it. I'll hit. Um, no, it's asked me if I want to change the size rotation. I'll just hit no there. And there we go. So my scale is a little big for this particular one. So let's scale that back to 20 scale. Remember annotation, civil 3D annotation is uh, annotative dynamically scales. So that's it. Um, I've got these nice little labels that are labeling the volume surface green for fill and red for cut. And it's essentially labeling directly be below the label at the drawdown point. So if I were to move this around, it's actually picking up on that cut and fill wherever it may be. Okay. All right. So um, at that point, I would probably just go and print the drawing. Um, I would probably just come over here onto my, my plan sheet. The plot styles are not set up very correctly in these files, so I'm just going to try to take a look here at a, a quick demo example. Uh, let's just put it at 10 foot scale. Zoom out there. 
that's a little bit far. So let's go 20 foot scale right there. Still a little far. 30. Okay. So uh, for eight and a half by 11 sheet like this, that, that is a little bit small, but you kind of get the point there. All right. So that's really all I wanted to show you on this one. It was a quick way to make those cut fill exhibits. Uh, before we go, let's take a look at what makes up those uh, spot elevations there. So this is in a surface label style, and this is a spot elevation. So let's look at the cut fill grid uh, style there. So let's edit that. And what we have is we've really got two labels sitting on top of each other. And there are two components here, a cut and then a fill. So for the fill, it's set to label the surface elevation. But this little value right here is what's important, where it says sign, hide the negative value. If the value is negative, meaning cut, it will actually not include this label component. So that's how that's made. Now for the fill or the cut component, there's actually an expression called negative surface value. And it's also set to hide the negative value. So if it reads on the surface that it should be a negative one, it will actually use this label expression, hide the negative surface value that just says negative one times the surface elevation. Okay. So it knows that if it's, if the actual value is negative one and I multiply it by negative one, now the value is a positive one and it can go ahead and create the label else it's a fill and it won't create the label. So that's kind of how that's constructed. Um, if you want to do something else on your own with that, feel free to use this one and just kind of work off of that. You might want to try to set it up so that it has a marker for negative values um, or a, pu a plus sign for the positive values. Um, so feel free to try that out. All right, so that's it on this one. Uh, come back for the last session, number 15. We're going to talk about a few more surface tools that are available to you. And then we'll just try to kind of wrap it up after that. All right. So uh, I'll see you then.